Every season of Survivor is a story. There are our main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to watch episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time they're introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We are going to look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we are only observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned, as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And with that... 39 days, 18 people, 1 survivor! Ken Wong, a 22-year-old professional Super Smash Brothers Melee player from California was a castaway on Survivor's 17th season, Survivor Gabon. Finally, after 16 seasons of standard definition, Survivor makes the leap to HD. And what a world of difference this makes as they are visiting Africa for the second time in the show's history and the cast we have here are 18 new players. We also learn that Exile Island is back with a hidden immunity idol being there and we then meet our 18 castaways including Kenny. This is Ken, I'm a professional video game player and a college student. I'm number one in the world at a video game. I'm a huge time strategist. But I am very shy, and in the game of Survivor, I am the underdog. Kenny has declared himself the underdog, and considering his age, size, and the attitude towards professional gamers in 2008, I completely understand it. Jeff then says the two oldest players here, which ends up being Bob and Jillian, will be in charge of drafting the two tribes. Why? Why is Survivor doing this? They have attempted this exact same twist in season five Thailand, and that season went terribly. And they attempted different variations of this in seasons 10 and 14. And while season 10 was entertaining, it was only because Survivor let that one tribe just suffer, not because of a good decision by production to let them pick their own tribes, that's for sure. But like a stubborn mule, the show's doing it again. Kenny's the last man picked and he ends up on Fong, which the show is already making a point to tell us that this tribe is dumb and they haven't done anything except for pick their own team but they do lose the reward challenge and their olympic runner crystal finishes last wow upon arriving at their camp things are looking up immediately as jillian their tribe leader says hey everyone i know one way we can enhance our camp life here hey you guys if anybody finds any elephant dung bring it back it burns well oh elephant dung there are elephants around because there was elephant dung that we walked over so you want to see the elephant dung Oh, really? Well, it's very interesting. Look. Yeah. We've been here 20 minutes and she wants Ellie. They poop out the seeds that they don't digest. And we were wondering maybe there might be something edible inside store. Oh, don't you, even think oh, about you that. You first. This is our first day. And I've come to the conclusion that Jillian is annoying. No, you can. You can squeeze yeah. elephant dog well. and drink it. She is so busy at just trying to look busy and she's not accomplishing crap. Do you remember the time before you had a significant other and you desired affection from someone hot and nice? Some of you are like, that's me right now. You're speaking about me. I feel called out. Well, I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page as we witness Kenny flirt with Michelle. As a professional gamer, there is a stereotype that you're, you know, you're antisocial, you're a nerd, you send your basement all the time. And of course, I mean, girls don't dig that. It'll be hot if you do that. Everything that you ate it? How'd it taste? I don't know, I just swallowed it. Back home, I am very shy with the girls that I like. Last girl I kissed was actually in high school. That was like four or five years ago, which is a long time. Being here in Gabon with a girl that you know you are attracted to is, is a very special moment in life. I mean, I am single and she is single. You never know. A romance could start. He isn't breaking any stereotypes as the typical gamer nerd, is he? That night, the elephants are so close to their hut that they just hear them passing by. It's a little scary because you just don't know what they're going to do. But then Randy, the wedding videographer, who hates weddings, get that, and is eternally grumpy, 
busts his head on the hut. Unlike in Micronesia, medical doesn't sit on their hands. They get out their lickety split and they stitch him up. The next morning, Michelle moans and whines and this is basically her MO. Everyone is pretty much over Michelle already because that's all she does, except Kenny. Kenny still likes her. At the immunity challenge, Fong falls so far behind that Jeff literally tells Jillian, hey, you're kind of wasting your time cheering for your tribe. It might be time to put it in the deep freeze, Jillian. You might be out of it. Nothing's gone till it's gone. <laughs> I'm really tired of, of that accent. I understand never quit, but dude, we lost. I mean, any moment the show can tell you how dumb this tribe is, they're taking advantage of it. Back at camp, talks arise about needing a leader and how that would fix everything. Knowing what I know about where this is going, there is no one here who can lead this group, trust me. Michelle then talks to Kenny and says she wants Jillian out. And Kenny says, I don't have a choice since they're all voting you out. And Michelle says, They're like the dumbest people on earth. You don't talk to anybody besides me, so they do think- They're all retarded, like- I know. Oh man, I wonder why people want Michelle out. It's not because she talks about them like this behind their back and Probably, I'm, I'm sure she just treats them really nice to their face. Yeah, I'm sure that's what she does. Well, let's jump to tribal council and see if Kenny's lust interest can get herself out of trouble. G Sizzle resting on his back, digging with one oh, hand. I'm sorry, yeah, I took a break. If that was the reason we lost, I'm sorry, but I mean. Well, it wasn't the reason we won, because we're sitting here. You can't go 100%, 100% of the time. Um, that's I mean, what a challenge is. We, we that's what a race is. Maybe you don't we stop till the job then. is done. Oh, I'm for sorry, Pete's sake, then why didn't you step up at that point and just get right on it? I didn't stop digging. But you should have verbalized You should have yelled at everybody said, to hey, keep digging. Just thought it's common sense that, seen. you know, when we're in a race that you don't stop until we're done or we win. Okay, I guess not. In a surprise move, GC is reluctantly elected to be the leader of the tribe. And in an eight to one landslide, Michelle is is gone. Michelle, tribe has spoken. Oh, but the premiere is not over yet as it is a two-parter. That night at camp, people are snoring, which wakes up GC, who decides to start doing chores, loud chores, right next to the hut, which wakes everyone else up. Oh boy, I am sure the lack of sleep will definitely contribute to them winning challenges. Also, GC gets mad and quits being the leader after being asked not to do chores in the middle of the night. Fun! Sure enough, Fong loses immunity again. And back at camp, Kenny and GC try to help out their tribe's morale by catching fish with the equipment they made themselves and it surprisingly works. Good for them. But now it is time to decide who gets voted off next. So, Crystal and Kenny talk. All the challenges so far here have been physical. So we haven't been winning any challenges because we're losers. So you have to learn from your mistakes that why we lost and right now, the reason why we lost is Jillian. At travel, I'm playing down Jill, hands down, no matter what. I'm just gonna say it out loud. <laughs> Jeff, I don't even wanna walk to the paper, okay? I'm just gonna tell you right now, I ain't even got the energy to walk up there. <laughs> Jillian. <laughs> Second person voted out of Survivor Gabon. Jillian. Jillian, the tribe has spoken. That is it for the premiere of Survivor Gabon, and so far Kenny seems to be an important figure on his tribe, but has been pigeonholed, character-wise, into being the stereotypical gamer nerd who is into hot girls but is awkward with them at the same time. I think he toes a dangerous line by saying we should vote on challenge strength given his physique, but if he is good enough at puzzles, that will likely be a non-issue. We shall see. By the way, if you want to pick what subjects I cover, including story videos, rankings, and even amazing race content, then consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Our show is patron supported, and that's why you don't see sponsors in any of these videos, as the patrons are the ones with the power to dictate what videos are made. If this interests you, then check out the link in the description. Thank you for your support. Episode two sees Fong starting to run into a food supply issue. What day is it? Isn't this day seven? Randy says we may need to only eat twice a day as our rice supply is rapidly dwindling. As it turns out, they've been eating three times a day. Now in regular life, that's fine. Eat three times a day, but on Survivor, they're given limited rations. And GC even says, I have been throwing away uneaten food. Wow. Thankfully they do win the reward challenge, but now it is time for immunity. And can they do it? Can they turn the momentum around for this tribe? Now up to Bob to solve the puzzle. Go, Ken. Try it. Bob thinks he might have it. Make those numbers into a combination. If you're right, the chest will open. No. Dan has it right for Bob. Bob 
Rock wins immunity! What do you know? Kenny can be helpful in challenges, which will definitely save his butt down the line, I bet. Episode 3 has a stunning realization happen for Fong as they realize they're over halfway through their rice supply. In fact, it's the morning of day 10 out of 39. Kenny says, that's fine. We'll be fine. We can eat the way we've been eating. But then we get a tribe swap where he stays on Fong with Maddie, GC, and Crystal, but is joined by Ace and Jackie. The question is, and he is being forced to pick somebody from the Air Tribe, who should they pick to join them? And what about Kelly? I don't know Kelly. You no. Know, what do you think? Oh, I think Bob's gonna go with Ace and Jackie if we do. Jeff, for myself, I've always been last picked sometimes, and I, I know how it feels to be left out. So I'm gonna go with Kelly. I wanna get to know her. And she's hot. <laughs> That may be the most surprising decision in 10 days out here, Ken. When I saw Kelly on that mat and she was last one to pick, I knew I could sway her to my side because she did not get along with Coda. Oh uh, yeah, and she's also hot. There you go. I don't doubt that Kelly being hot had a slight influence. I guess she is more Kenny's type than Sugar who's staying there as well, considering Kelly is 22 and Sugar is 29. But that is all used as a cover up for his real reason and I think his real reason is sound logic. Back at camp, the old CODA members reveal that basically no one likes Kelly and Kelly doesn't like them. Ah, just like the Michelle situation from earlier. Kelly then says, I am with you, Kenny. Nice. At the immunity challenge, they get absolutely destroyed in a blowout as Randy, who by the way, is eternally grumpy. I know I said that earlier, but if you see his video or you've seen the season, you'll know this dude's constantly annoyed. He basically takes revenge on his old Fong tribe and crushes them. Back at camp, it seems like the easy target is Kelly, but as it turns out, whoever they vote off will be replaced by Sugar, who wasn't picked for either tribe and is currently living on Exile Island. They know Kelly isn't in good with Sugar, but Ace and Jackie are, so they gotta knock out one of those two. They say let's vote off Jackie since Ace can actually help us in challenges, so uh, for some reason, Maddie snitches on them. And then they wanted, and then they were talking about taking out you. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 we can't take out Jackie. She's too strong. Maddie told me that they want me off or something. I work my ass off in the challenges. People are scared. I know I don't want to see you leave. I don't, I just, what am I going to like? If I did vote with you, yeah. then it wouldn't have mattered anyways. Fourth person voted out of Survivor the Bone. Jackie. Jackie, the tribe has spoken. <laughs> Thankfully, nothing could be done since the idol only exists on Exile and only Sugar could have it if anyone has found it. And speaking of her, she shows up to replace Jackie that very night and the next morning, Jillian would be thrilled by the prospect of what they're about to witness as look at these elephants. Look how much dung they are producing. Right there, right at the bodies. Crazy. This friggin' elephant in the jungle, it's here in our camp, and it's among us all day, because we hear him all day, but you can't necessarily see him all the time. And to actually see one and put the face to the noise, it's magnificent, and it just makes you appreciate the simplicity of life and the, and the pure things, and it makes you appreciate Gabon. After that awesome event, they lose reward despite Kenny going all out and being their MVP, and Sugar is sent to exile for a third time in a row by the other tribe. Back at camp, Crystal and GC fight. Now, you may be wondering, what are they fighting over? What happened? Crystal made a semi-serious joke and said, GC, eat your rice. And GC got greatly offended, which by the way is par for the course with GC over almost anything. So offended that he goes on a boat with the intention of leaving his tribe behind. Thankfully, he comes back at the last minute, and while the show doesn't tell us why, I bet you somebody from production said, hey, get your butt back to your camp. They then lose immunity, thanks to Randy, as I said, he is eternally grumpy, taking revenge on his tribe by tricking Sugar and Ace. And back at camp, Crystal looks in Sugar's bag and finds that she does indeed have the idol while Kenny watches her do this. Crystal says Sugar's gotta go, but then GC says, vote me out. I don't want to be here. So sure enough, at Tribal Council, he is gone in a six to one landslide. GC, tribe has spoken. Episode five begins and uh, 
they're almost out of rice. Kenny says, I've been telling these people since day one that we need to reserve the rice. Now, if Kenny did say that it wasn't shown, but what we did see him say was it's fine the way they're eating the rice in episode three. So you be the judge. They do end up losing reward on a running challenge where Crystal struggles. Are we for real? Is this, the, this is an Olympic runner and they lose immunity due to Ace thinking he can do everything himself. Ace is extremely arrogant and has a very questionable British accent. We then see a secret scene with him and Kenny as they discuss who they want to vote off next. If we get rid of Kelly, our team will be stronger. Yeah. I mean, just after today, we'll get rid of Kelly. Our team will be stronger. We'll win some rewards and some new units. Well, I think we will start winning some because I saw Kelly and it's going to die. And I was like, what? Dude, she had the first one. I thought she would be, you know, at least stronger. So, Kelly's fine. Feel better, Kenny, in the morning? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go up and drive. Okay. Kelly's just irritating and really dumb. Just because she's grown up with money, and good for her. You know, I grew up with money, but I don't think she really learned anything. We then see Kenny and Crystal talking while they say Kelly can go. Ace is the bigger threat. Let's get him instead. However, Maddie says, I promised Ace I wouldn't vote him off. Great. So Kenny and Crystal need another vote to help them. So he approaches Sugar with a plan. So I figured, you know, maybe we should stick together. So you think I should give that one from me, or what? You gave Ace the idol? Yeah, he has it. Are you crazy? I was so shocked today when Sugar told me that she gave the hidden meaning idol to Ace, and I was like, wait, what? Ace has the idol? Why? Why does Ace have Sugar's idol? Well, it's back to plan B since Ace isn't an option, and at Tribal Council, Kelly pulls another Michelle and fights with Ace and Crystal, and then everyone votes her out five to one. Kelly? Travis has spoken. Time for to go. Episode 6 sees another food supply issue as Crystal spills the rice all over the ground. Every episode, every episode I start and say, oh, here's what episode it is. Oh, here's the current rice supply situation. It's getting worse and worse. Now, Crystal, she spilled it on the ground. Wonderful. I mean, they lose a good chunk of this rice in the process. Ace says Crystal is gone next. We then see a secret scene of their entire tribe doing yoga in hopes it will help them with the next challenge, and they lose reward. So I guess it didn't help. And that's probably why it was a secret scene. As we then see Sugar going to Exile Island for a record five times in a row. We then see people conniving before they even get a chance to lose immunity as Maddie and Ace talk. So what's our next move, Crystal? Crystal. You know what they're talking about, right, Crystal? Yeah, those two asses out there in the boat trying to get me off. We have to blindside Ace. Yeah. I have to talk to Sugar. Crystal. You trust me 100%, right? I trust you 100%. Let's see if Kenny and Crystal can make that happen. As it turns out, this episode twist is that both tribes are going to Tribal Council no matter what, which is probably why we saw them conniving earlier. So Kenny does his best to flip Sugar to his side, even if it means embracing being a full-on villain. I will lie in this game. I will do everything in my power to get her to vote with me because my life and Crystal's life rests upon her. And Manny goes, we're voting out Sugar next immunity challenge mm -hmm. and then when crystal went away i look at ace i'm like are we really rolling out sugar and ace is like right now sugar is really good for nothing except for the hidden immunity idol they think you're like clueless you're like a dumb blonde or whatever okay and ace thinks he has you wrapped around his finger ace is like well i've actually got the hidden immunity idol from her once i could probably do that and then we can blindside her and then i'll have the hidden immunity idol and i was like oh my freaking god this guy is a snake. You and I will say we're voting on Crystal. You vote Ace, I vote Ace, Crystal votes Ace. And we blindside Ace. Blindside Ace, bye. And we don't have to worry about the snake yeah. ever again. I'll read the votes. First vote, Ace. Ace. Crystal. We're tied. Seventh person voted out of Survivor Gabon. Ace. Ace, the tribe has spoken. Come on, guys. Ace is gone. Sugar bought into the lie. Sugar even says Kenny's honesty, that's what flipped her. Oh, if only she knew. People start suspecting the merge is soon to be happening. So Sugar, Maddie, Crystal, and Kenny agree to be the final four, but then a note arrives saying to bring your personal stuff with you to the beach to enjoy a feast. Hey, that sounds like a merge to me. It is 
is important to note that with the merge about to happen, that Fong is down four to six against the Kodo Alliance. Things are looking grim. They need two people to flip or a good successful eye to play, or they can flip one person to have a tie, but then like the tie has to go their way. It's, it's a lot. But speaking of idols. Oh my God. I saw the hidden immediate idol note under the table and the idol was more tempting than the food. I was trying to read it to see what it was and by then, Charlie already looked over and started reading it too. And then I was like, okay, I guess my cover is blown. Damn it, damn it. There's my chance to find a hidden immediate idol for myself and Charlie blew it for me. You have just discovered a clue to another hidden immediate idol. Do you keep it a secret or share? We say we, we find it and as a group set it yeah, sail. Yeah, set Why it do, that's a great idea. I think if we don't need a stinking idol. I didn't even need to see a note. I knew the, the weird shaped tree on the beach was significant and it was like pointing into the sand and I'm like, how obvious. I'm sorry if I'm sounding arrogant, but it was a joke. I gave myself 20 seconds. I think I took seven. I'm king of Gabon. I found it and uh, I don't want it. And, <laughs> it. and if anybody else wants it, by all means, take it. Immunity, the most important thing in this game. But if I were to take it, then I'd look like a snake. I can't take that chance. With all due respect to President Bongo, I am the new king of Gabon. I'm sorry, but I rule. This ocean, it's mine. All those Fong, Code of members, they work for me. I'm king. Cheers. These people are so stupid. I got 10 people to throw an immunity idol into the ocean. Can you blame Charlie? I don't, but Kenny does, and he wants revenge. But get this, Marcus and Randy are so confident that things are gonna go their way since they have the numbers by a clear difference that they take that immunity idol and just chuck it in the ocean. They don't need it with the numbers they currently hold and they don't want anyone else to have it. Everyone then opens the mysterious box on their table and sure enough, it's a tribe swap. Wait, what? No merge. Kenny is now on Coda with Crystal, Susie, Bob, and Marcus. Great. He doesn't have the numbers here either. Kenny knows it and says, um, yeah, I'm the next to go. It doesn't help when at the immunity challenge, Crystal drops out after literally one second and they lose. Not solely due to Crystal, just want to point that out. It's just funny. Kenny has only avoided one tribal all season and Marcus is pretending he wants Susie out, but Crystal says, Kenny, they don't want Susie out, they want you out. Marcus is playing you like a fiddle. Kenny then talks to Marcus in this secret scene about this. I hate to do this, but I think that my votes will probably end up going to you tonight. And it's not because I don't think you're probably one of the best friends I would make out here. I swear, like, I'm not happy about this is a, this is by far the worst day i've had here marcus he's all trying to be super nice to me and i gave him just some fake tears just so he would know that i'm really sad and i know that i'm going home well i mean i hope you believe the friendship part because i know that you don't lie about stuff and i know that you tell the truth about the experiences that you've had here marcus tries to act he always acts like he's genuine and mr captain america with his perfect teeth and his smile but apparently no he's a dirty player he was he was playing me i i think you're awesome like i said we have so much in common and everything and i'm serious dude really so. wow who knew marcus was so bad at lying crystal then talks to Susie and says hey Susie, you should join me and kenny because marcus is playing you like a fiddle which is, by the way, mostly true. Marcus has no intention going to the end with Susie, and Susie's under the impression that Marcus wants to go to Final 3 with her. I mean, maybe he does. We don't hear that he doesn't. But at the same time, nobody on Coda has ever respected Susie, so she's their most likely candidate to flip. So we go to Tribal Council where Kenny is over Marcus's lies to him and everyone else. I think it's important to keep the tribe physically strong and ready for challenges. My hope is to keep us as strong as we can. I think that's total bull what he just said in his mouth. He's definitely looking for a merge around the corner and have numbers to take out Fong. Is it not a strategy, Marcus, to vote out Fong? You know very well that we beat you guys seven times in a row, and why would we want to change any of the people in there? Frankly, I think you're a really nice guy, and it sucks that your frustration is being taken out in this direction, you know? But I feel that you are the leader of CODA, and that you are the special Coda God that everybody's listening to to vote somebody out. I'm one of the five opinions here, and we don't see who we vote for until the final vote is called, so. I'll read the votes. Kenny. Kenny. Two votes, Kenny. Marcus. Marcus. We're tied. Two votes, Marcus. Two votes, Kenny. 
Ninth person voted out of Survivor Gabon and the first member of our jury. Marcus. Marcus, tribe has spoken. Wow. Susie flipped. Marcus has gone three to two, and the Coda Alliance that was up six to four over Fong is now down four to five, all due to Kenny and Crystal flipping Susie. That night, Kenny jokes that he channeled his inner Crystal when he snapped on Marcus, but Bob is in the background like, holy smokes, I am screwed, because Bob's the only Coda member left in this tribe. Upon arriving at the reward challenge, the other Coda members realize exactly what happened. Getting your first look at the new Coda, Marcus. Voted out at the last hair. tribal council. Korean, you look miserable. I'm pissed, yeah. He didn't deserve to leave the game. So who does? Who does deserve to leave the game? Marcus had this game in the bag. If it wasn't for the Susie flip, they were going to hand him the win. Trust me, his alliance, they were ready to just give it to Marcus. Anyways, Koda loses reward and Kenny says he's grown a bit since the beginning as he's learning to play the show in a way that shows he isn't just an underdog. But then he says, with Bob gone on exile, he is alone at camp with two beautiful ladies, Crystal and Susie. That's the Kenny I expected to see. But then it finally happens, for reals this time, the merge. The big question is which side will Sugar pick? She is playing a very emotional game and you can't logically depend on her to stick to your alliance. That's when we get this very important scene. I have a personal grudge against Charlie at that feast. Freaking Charlie took that paper and he made me share it with everybody. I could have got a hit in me idol and no one would have known. But no, so I made up this little lie. I said, Charlie, he's behind the scenes of Coda. He's telling people what to do. But really, no, I made it up and everybody listened to me. I'm like a little rat. I go, you know, in the, in the corner and nobody knows that. You mess with me, then you're gone in this case. Charlie is the brain behind the whole Coda Cabana. Really? So not. It's not Randy and not Corinne. We will get rid of them as soon as we can. But Charlie tells them what to do and he's the brains behind really? the whole thing. Charlie. Yes, but he seems nice, but he goes out and talks to them and whispers to them. Okay. And then they they beat themselves. Okay. So yes, once we get rid of Charlie, we can get rid of Randy and Corinne, whoever you want. I think I'm the lady of the hour <laughs> because everybody's telling me who to vote for and chomping at the bit to like get my vote for somebody. Just, you gotta do it with us, uh, get the numbers, blah, blah, blah. Hmm, interesting. Sugar talks to the other lines and says she wants Randy gone, but they won't budge at all. At Tribal Council, we see Randy and Charlie both compliment Kenny. A bit unexpected, almost feels like the show left this in to really butter up Kenny. Hey, but it's still appreciated as they see the growth he has had over the course of this game. But now, it is time to vote, and... First vote. Who cast this vote? Uh, CC, Crystal Cox. Crystal. 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 Charlie. 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 Tenth person voted out of Survivor Gabon and the second member of our jury. Charlie. Charlie, tribe has spoken. That's game, right? Kenny has the numbers. It seems like he is on the surefire path to victory, making these moves and having others recognize his good gameplay so far. It's now time for the auction, and this means everyone gets $500 to bid on whatever they want with however much they want. But there are a limited number of items, and everyone knows this. Kenny spends $340 of his $500, and this gives him the power to send someone to exile and take their money. So he sends Bob, and now he's up to $660. Okay, keep that in mind. Kenny now has the most money out of everyone here with $660. Let's montage the auction. Next item up for bid. $100. $320. $320 to Randy. It's all his money? I think so. He can have it. Then. A hot bath. Ah. $340. $340 to Susie's. Gold to Susie. I should have gone for that, Kenny. I would have cuddled with you if you had your clothes on. <laughs> would you cuddle with a rich man? <laughs> oh my God. Burger price? Burger price? 100. 340. 340 to Kenny. 400. <laughs> Once, twice, sold to Maddie. Next item will remain covered. Let's try $100. 280. He can have it. Kenny, giving it up again. What is that? <gasps> Good job, Randy. Spaghetti, garlic bread, oh, sorry, man. and a glass of wine. First 20 bucks buys this for the tribe. 20. You just made a lot of people very happy. I can have them all myself if I want. For the tribe. Okay. Brandy. I don't want to sure? thank you. I could Are you sure? possibly. Thank you. you sure, Sugar? Maddie's Sugar? getting it. 
it, it's not yours to give to Maddie. I'm the boss. Last chance you can have a full one. Thank you. Randy offers Sugar his own cookie. She takes it and gives it to Maddie. Yeah. Would you like to repeat that? Wow. I think it worked out the way it worked out. Sugar, she can kiss my ass. But why? What was Kenny waiting for? He didn't even spend the $20 to buy everyone cookies. Oh, and at the immunity challenge, Corinne bought an advantage back at the auction to help her advance to the finals automatically. But Kenny reaches that point purely on skill. So when it comes down to who wins immunity, you will sit out for the first stage of this challenge and move directly into the final round. Go. Your job is to arrange those puzzle blocks like a nice line of dominoes. We're in making a lot of progress. Question is, have you spaced them properly? Kenny coming on strong now. Suddenly, Kenny's nearly complete. Do not panic. Take your time. <laughs> Everybody has their blocks moving. Who's going to finish first? Does he go, Corinne? No, Corinne stops short. Kenny! Wins immunity! Back at camp, it's decided that Randy is next, but then Maddie says, what about Bob? And no, Maddie's not talking about Bill Murray. He means Bob from CODA. He says Randy nor Corinne are going to win a jury, which is true. But Bob could win a jury, which is also true. People are like, nah, we want Randy out still. We hate him, which is conflated with Randy being a jerk to everyone at camp too, including telling Susie to shut the F up. Yeah, that's just classic Randy. Let's do this. Let's witness one of the most iconic tribal councils of all time. I'm voting you, Susie, because Maybach's a bitch. This vote is not strategic. It's strictly personal. You are a disgusting, old, hot-headed, chauvinistic, alcoholic, bigot, and you need to grow up before you die alone. I'm a loser. You have made my life hell from day one. To get you, go home, Goodbye. If anybody has the hidden immunity idol and you want to play it, now would be the time to do so. Thank you. This is not a hidden immunity idol. I think that Randy would fall for it. Sugar wants to play the joke on Randy. My life expectancy is a little bit better off, allowing her to have the satisfaction of me giving Randy the, the idol. I get nothing to lose. Randy is an ass, and I loathe him with every inch of my being. First vote. Randy. Susie. Randy. Susie. That's three votes, Susie. Randy. Randy. 11th person voted out of Survivor Gabon and the third member of our jury. Randy. Randy, tribe has spoken. Wow. So basically Bob made a fake idol and Sugar convinced him to give it to Randy to play. Why? Oh, you know, just for funsies, of course. Everyone is doing things just for personal reasons at this point. The next morning, Kenny is feeling mighty good about himself. I would never have imagined me being out here and catching fish. I'm not an outdoorsy type of person. I'm just a gamer at home, but out here, I'm my own man. So I am very proud of myself because guys like me would never, ever be out here in a situation like this, but only in the game of Survivor. This is mm -hmm. crazy. I've been able to yeah. catch tilapia, turtle, and big catfish. Yeah! And this is so weird. It. Bob doesn't look out for himself. He doesn't know how to play this game at all. He's just here to, to build things, and that's stupid, you know? You know, he's taught me a lot out here, but as far as playing the game, he's not very good at it. Good job, Bob. So, sure, I don't mind getting rid of Bob, and I feel like I need to pull the power into my own hands and take charge. Maybe too good. Don't get cocky, Kenny. Everyone then gets to see a video from their family members at the reward challenge and Kenny balls upon seeing his sister. Bob wins the reward challenge and as a result gets to spend some alone time with his wife. Hello, but then brings everyone's loved ones back to camp. Kenny talks to his sister and his ego is really inflating fast, faster than we have seen before. As he says, these people all trust him and love him and owe him. And he's going to win come the final three. But then Bob wins immunity and Corinne talks to Kenny. Now, this is never specifically stated by anyone. I am just filling in the gaps based on what we've seen so far. Keep that in mind. But I suspect Corinne's attractiveness plays a part in what you're about to witness. You really can't say anything. I promise. Okay. I swear. So, you remember when they threw the idol out into the ocean? Uh -huh. We're taking out Maddie, and that's it. So, he may end up going home, but I know I'm not. This has definitely changed the game, and uh, 
I think the best shot is to blindside Maddie right now. We come up with a ridiculously harebrained scheme that shouldn't work at all, and it might actually work, which is so mind-blowing. It just shows you the level of like incompetence that we're playing with. Why did I label that as dumb? Because everything she just told him is fabricated, and he bought it hook, line, and sinker. However, he isn't completely stupid, and him and Crystal devise a plan to still split their votes with Corinne going if she doesn't play an idol. So at Tribal Council, everyone goes to vote, and... First vote, Maddie. Corinne, one vote Maddie, one vote Corinne. Maddie, two votes Maddie. Maddie, Corinne, two votes Corinne. Corinne, that's three votes, Corinne. Twelfth person voted out of Survivor Gabon and the fourth member of our jury. Corinne. Corinne, the tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. Corinne's idol, like Randy's, was a well-made fake by Bob. Kenny is like, oh crap, I'm in some hot water now. I voted against Maddie, and Maddie is mad. Maddie goes up to Kenny and says, what the heck? Why'd you flip on our alliance? I thought we were going to be the final four. Kenny says, whatever. I'm the mastermind and I dictate what happens around here. Oh boy, this is not going to go well. Crystal then states how her not voting on Maddie was a mistake and she has no idea. But then we get a crucial discussion between Kenny and Bob. Did you guys lie to me? No. Why did Corinne play the idol tonight? It's fake. So you guys did lie to me. I risked everything to try to save you. This is what I get for being a nice guy. If I want an next I'll give it to you. Bob offered to give me the community necklace. I made him feel sorry for me. This is a huge power play. Um, I feel horrible about it. I made Kenny a promise that I wasn't playing him as a fool, and that I own something, and I, I want to be, you know, man of my word. So, uh, Bob lied. Again, Kenny shouldn't trust him with this offer, especially as Bob has now tricked multiple people during this post-merge game. But Bob wins a reward and chooses to take Crystal and Kenny with him to enjoy it, and that makes Kenny feel good. They then agree that Maddie is the next to go, which leads to... I mean, if you win immunity, mm -hmm. I could take a risk. You don't have to give to me the first time, but... <laughs> <laughs> If I don't give it to you the first time, I'm not a man of my word, right? Uh, yeah, yeah that's I mean, true. This is the plan. At the next tribal, I'll be wearing the necklace that I haven't won yet. Uh, and if Kenny feels that he needs it, and if he wants it, I will give it to him. If he thinks it's better off protecting me, he'll say, no, keep it. Kenny thinks he's playing 4D chess here by telling Bob not to give it to him next time, since Kenny assumes he will be safe at next tribal, because Kenny just wants to take that favor up later in the game when he knows he needs it. The reality is that Kenny should just take it whenever he can get it and stop demanding so many things. Back at camp, Kenny continues to dig himself a hole when Maddie says he is mad at Kenny. Kenny says, get over it, it's just a game. And while Kenny is technically correct on paper he would pass a test he's going to need jury votes to win this game and right now he's burning a jury member by saying get over your feelings you idiot i mean unless he plans on bringing maddie to final three which i don't think is the case now get this bob the wins immunity that is four individual challenge wins in a row but then kenny decides to channel his inner grinch and we get rid of maddie tonight there's a chance that bob lied to me and won't give me the necklace next time so I'm gonna tell Bob to give me the necklace tonight and we gotta vote for Bob. Okay. Sounds good. Is that okay? I'm cool with that. You would have thought Bob would be winning all these challenges, but he has been. We should have got rid of him when we had the chance, but we kept him in because everybody hated Randy and now we're paying for it. He's too dangerous at this point. None of us has a chance to get mixed to the final three. Okay. Don't yow man the situation, Kenny. Just accept the necklace and don't screw over Bob. Oh my gosh, why burn yet another potential jury member? But Kenny isn't changing gears. He is going through with this plan. He then tries to play scared to Bob like, oh no, I'm gonna be voted off tonight. And Bob's like, what are you talking about? Literally no one's talking about voting you out, Kenny. Crystal then tells Sugar and Maddie the plan to trick Bob. Why? I guess because they should all be aligned, except Sugar is an emotional wild card and Maddie is mad. Sugar says, yeah, screw that. And she tells Bob the plan. Wonderful, just great. At Tribal Council, Kenny lays it on extra thick about how badly he needs this necklace. So it is time to vote. And did Bob learn his lesson from Eric and Micronesia? Bob, it's time to vote. You have the individual immunity necklace. You can keep it for yourself. You can give it to somebody else, including Kenny, if you want to. It is up to you. I'm going to keep it because I don't think he's going home tonight. Maddie, take this cursed thing away. 
The rules of Survivor state that if somebody plays a hidden immunity idol, then any votes cast against that person will not count. The person with the next highest number of votes will be voted out. This is indeed a hidden immunity idol. First vote, Maddie does not count. Maddie does not count. Crystal, one vote for Crystal. Crystal, 13th person voted out and the fifth member of our jury. Crystal, Crystal, tribe has spoken. Finale time, it is Bob versus Kenny versus Sugar versus Maddie versus Susie. Who will win the crown of sole survivor? Well, back at camp, Kenny is mad about the crystal blind side and by announcing this whole deal in front of everybody, I think he was sort of trying to embarrass me if I didn't stand by my word. For me, it's a little bit on the annoying side. That means all promises are off. That's how it's gonna be me. That's why I didn't give you the idol. The next time, what happens if it is me and you have an idol? Why don't you get your own idol? Wow, who knew Bob could burn people that hard? Good for him. Oh, everyone should know about Bob burning people because he has tricked multiple people with fake idols. And everyone should know about Bob being such a trickster because he's done that now multiple times with fake idols. But him burning people now, whew, another level. Kenny then walks and talks with Sugar and she makes him feel really good about the fact that now Crystal is gone, he's guaranteed final three. He's safe. We then get a secret scene from Kenny where he reflects on how much he has grown over the 37 days he's been in this game so far. In my wildest dream, I would never have imagined me being out here. Typically, I'm not an outdoor person, but I've grown out here. I'm not the same person that I left and I'm different now. When I look at myself in the mirror, it's just like, wow, I don't see the, the person that I saw coming into this game. I see someone who I don't even recognize. I feel like I've changed a lot and just living out here changes you. It's not just about strategy is also about living out here and being more relaxed and being with the people you want to be with and it's just an amazing experience to be out here and I love it every day of it. Look at this guy, look at this guy. Oh, he's heavy. Is a big old tilapia? One tilapia. Today, we hit the jackpot. It's gonna surprise them all. I'm gonna be so happy. Now you might be thinking, is Kenny safe or is Sugar just blowing smoke up his butt? Uh, the latter. She's just blowing smoke up his butt. He isn't safe. Bob wins his fifth challenge in a row, netting him immunity. And Kenny goes back to camp and just chills. He truly thinks he's good to go and he's doing absolutely nothing to make sure the plan is not him tonight. He thinks, hey, Susie's a goner. What am I going to do? But then we go to tribal council where Kenny tries his absolute best to guilt trip Bob. I really feel that Bob is actually going to back down on his deal because the deal was that if he won the next challenge, he'd give it to me. And then he said, only if I think you're going. Apparently there was some small print at the bottom of the contract that you had to look at the magnifying glass to see. Well, what I didn't realize was he went back to the tribe and discussed with people that when I gave him the, the necklace, that they would then blindside me. That was a small print in the bottom of the contract you forgot to read, that if I help you, you help me. Not if I help you, you stab me in the back. If I felt like I was gonna go that night, he'd give me the idol, and of course, who else are they gonna vote for but Bob? It's not called a blindside, it's called saving me if I feel like I'm going. <laughs> oh. So Kenny, you don't see any problem with taking it and then him being vulnerable and going home. That's just the way the game goes. Yeah, that's what he said. He said he'd sacrifice his life for me if that was the case. That was the deal. 14th person voted out and the sixth member of our jury, Kenny. Kenny, the tribe has spoken. So let's break this down. How is Kenny as a character? I don't recall us ever having a gamer nerd on Survivor before. Sure, there were some people who seemed like they were nerds, and in fact, some of them were, but no one was a professional gamer that fits all the stereotypes that people have about them, especially in 2008. He started as an underdog on the Fong tribe who was easy to root for until he made some big moves and got really cocky. To be fair, the cast he was playing against weren't all stars, but a little humility might have gone a long way. Regardless, I can't name another person like Kenny who also made a big splash on their season. Out of 13 character moments shown on the show, four were heroic and nine were villainous, making Kenny a villain character on Survivor Gabon. Now, how is Kenny as a strategist? Slap about five years of maturity onto the Kenny we saw this season, and I think we potentially have a different winner. He attends all the tribal councils except one, worked from the underdog position to overthrow the power lines, and always seemed to be in the know. 
until he wasn't. Once Curran and Bob tricked Kenny, that was game. He burned his own alliance and got far too fixated on Bob giving him the necklace that went down the wrong path to try and win. Up through the Randy vote, he was golden. Curran and Bob really did him in. But I gotta give him props, Kenny played a great game, he just screwed up at the end. Out of 40 strategic moments shown on the show, 25 were smart and 15 were dumb, making Kenny a smart strategist on Survivor Gabon. Thanks for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.